So yeah. uh, it's like uh, the chatbot was able now was able to reason better in the clinical analysis. Exactly. Uh, but when it comes now to the diagnosis, yeah, uh, it, it gives failed. You. Uh, hello guys, uh, welcome back to the Data Insights Podcast and uh, today we want to discuss uh, the application of artificial intelligence in the field of healthcare and uh, with me here is Mr. Sevia. So how are you Sevia? Good morning, how are you Paul? I'm fine, thank you. Uh, thank you so much. Yes, welcome. Yeah, thank you. So uh, Sevia, I believe you've had a conversation about, about artificial intelligence and its application in healthcare. And the most uh, interesting development that we had in the past week is uh, that one of the county governments in Kenya actually decided to employ artificial intelligence in their radiography in one of the counties. So what is your take uh, regarding this and the state of artificial intelligence in healthcare? Okay, uh, so I believe that this is a a very good initiative, uh, especially when we see that uh, access to healthcare uh, mostly in uh, Africa has been quite mm-hmm. low. Yes. And sure. uh, I believe uh, by deploying artificial intelligence, because I saw that they were deploying in radiography uh, mm-hmm. department, yes. and uh, they were talking about that this is already a solution that is approved by the World Health Organization. Yes. And um, based on the available data, they were talking that uh, it was reducing cost by 50%. Nice. And uh, we, we see that the cost of healthcare has been really quite high. Yes. But just in summary, is that artificial intelligence deployment and uh, adoption by government agencies is a, a very good initiative uh, in ensuring that um, there is improved um, delivery uh, and commitment from the government side uh, in terms of um, the welfare and the uh, uh, health uh, of its citizens. Of its citizens. Yeah. So uh, actually, when you talk of artificial intelligence, and especially in the context of Africa, yeah. uh, most of the people tend to think that this is something that is in the future. Yeah. Uh, but uh, with such applications, uh, with such developments like what we saw in the Kirinyaka County, yeah. uh, we, it would be apt to say that uh, it's something that is happening in real time. It's something that is yeah. here now with us. Yeah, yeah, it is something that is here. Leave alone Kirinyaga alone. Yes. Um, uh, I saw sometimes there was um, um, uh, some kind of uh, application uh, of artificial intelligence in dental. Yeah. Care, yeah, sure. whereby they were um, uh, artificial intelligence was deployed to be able to assist in assessing the uh, uh, dental issues and uh, yeah. what they were the hospital was talking about yeah. was that uh, it was reducing the turnaround uh, cost. So the cost. it is not just the Kenyaga that we have seen. We have a lot, a lot. of unshared stories of, about what is happening. But I believe that uh, this kind of visibility that we can see, mm. uh, the reception, the positive reception that you can see, is truly a good thing for even some uh, other agencies or countries or hospitals yes. that have been reluctant now to benchmark on those that have already taken an but, initiative. Yeah, sure. Yes. So uh, it's actually, it shows that uh, people are now beginning to accept the reality of artificial intelligence. Exactly. Yeah. And you see that it is not only on, in terms of diagnostic of diseases. Yes. Uh, we have a administration part of the it. Administrative. Because yeah. what physicians could focus is um, on the core mandate what they are supposed to do. Mm-hmm. And we have some other administrative tasks that um, mm-hmm. even sure. uh, artificial intelligence chatbots can be can, able to do. Can we, assist yeah, them. we have the issues of uh, predictive analytics yes. to predict the trend of diseases and also perhaps what someone... And maybe analyze the data ex- and make ex- predictions ex- about how to create... Exactly. Things. So... We have diverse applications. It's not just about diagnostic, but of diseases. Yes. But we have a lot of applications of artificial intelligence, intelligence. in healthcare. Yes. yes. So uh, that is quite interesting. And uh, how prepared are we? Uh, let's narrow this down now to uh, the Kenyan context. Okay. Uh, how prepared do you think we are in terms of our healthcare system? Uh, when it comes to uh, the application or the adoption of artificial intelligence? 
Okay, uh, based on the current use cases that we have seen coming out uh, uh, in the media, there are just about two or three there. Yeah, yes, sure. I believe that with awareness, this is a new technology, and uh, with uh, proper awareness, I believe that uh, uh, it is something that is going to peak. Yeah. And uh, given that, let me just go back to the the, the one that was deployed at, uh, at the Kenya County in Kenya. You see, it is an initiative that is supported by AMREF International and the World Health Organization. Um, so once it has come through the Ministry of Health and a mm. proper sensitization has been taken, yeah. uh, I believe that the adoption is going to be well. Mm. But as you are speaking now, mm. My opinion is that um, in terms of uh, uh, how prepared we are we as a, a, a nation, yeah. I, I believe it is we are not well prepared because of awareness. Because of awareness, awareness, and way. also we might have some kind of uh, reluctance. Uh, the issues mm -hmm. of data privacy mm -hmm. because the healthcare data is very very sensitive. sensitive. Exactly. Yeah. So uh, that that is quite okay because. Uh, when you say there should be sensitization and imprisonment, and there's one uh, key thing that you mentioned, that adoption of artificial intelligence, and especially in the case of Kirinyaga, it, it managed to cut the cost of radiography yes, exactly. uh, by around 50%. Yes, exactly. And uh, I tell you, if you look at this, uh, there's an area, uh, there's a medical area that is uh, quite neglected, with, that is the mental or the behavioral health. Yeah. Uh, we realize that, uh, like in Kenya, uh, mental health issues are not uh, actually uh, quite taken care of. Uh, this could be because of uh, lack of adequate assessment of the information that you have. For instance, you realize that uh, most of people who are suffering mentally, uh, they're there on the social media, uh, they share very key information that if properly assessed in time, uh, could assist them could assist in diagnosis uh, and, and health care yeah. uh, assistance to them. So if we look at, uh, if we look at uh, artificial intelligence, I think this is one of the areas in which we can employ this so that uh, it can analyze the type of data that, that is shared uh, on the social media platforms uh, to assess those who are at the highest risk category uh, of suffering from, let me say, those men, mental it, issues. Yeah, yeah, th that's and true because um, you see um, the stories that these people are, are sharing, it can truly tell you that this person is not uh, in his or her proper mindset. Mm, yes. And uh, based on the data, historical data that is available, I believe uh, that um, models can be developed that are able to detect such cases earlier okay. enough and yes. these people uh, can be assisted in without time. yeah in time yeah. without waiting for a very long a period of time then later we regret why didn't we take this yeah. action initiative initiative yeah, yeah those are just some kind of diversity where uh, ai is going uh, to play a very crucial role yeah. to try to alleviate such cases of suicide um, and other uh, mental, mental uh, breakdown. uh, breakdowns yeah. And all the negative. Because these are these are actually cases that can be prevented if they're detected AI in time. In time exactly, yes. and AI can really assist us. Assist us, and uh, yeah. with the kind of social media data we are sharing, yeah. it, it is something that needs to be looked into. Yes. yes. So this uh, this is why it is actually crucial to sensitize us, to sensitize the public uh, on up the on the adoption of artificial intelligence, and maybe the stakeholders. In yeah, the healthcare sector. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They, they, they need to for 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 that because uh, yeah. AI is uh, playing a very crucial role. Uh, let us look at the good side first before mm -hmm. I, I understand that we have the bad side of AI. Oh, yes. if, uh, it is not used well, especially yes. in healthcare. But uh, the bad side can also be looked into. We have initiative strategies that. Uh, we can make sure that this responsible yeah. use of AI, of AI in artificial, healthcare, yeah. exactly. And you know, when you talk of the bad side of artificial intelligence, yeah. uh, the area that I believe scares most people uh, is the development of sessions, artificial intelligence, and uh, that is the artificial intelligence systems that are aware of their existence. 
So they are like, it would be like creating digital person. Mm, uh, yeah, but that exactly. is a conversation we'll have um, yeah. another day. Yeah. So when you talk about artificial intelligence uh, and its application in healthcare, one thing that people tend to ask when you talk about application of these technologies <clears throat> in various sectors yeah. is, uh, are our jobs safe? Are they secure? Or is this technology coming to take away our job? So when you talk of uh, artificial intelligence and, uh, and its application in healthcare, yeah. uh, are those who are in the healthcare currently, in the healthcare service currently, are uh, their jobs at stake or is this something that will be used to augment uh, the services that they deliver? Okay, uh, artificial intelligence uh, and all these technologies, I believe uh, they augment what human beings do. Mm. Like uh, what that one means is that we work in uh, alongside the, uh, the, 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 the these machines uh, yes. together yeah. uh, because just giving an example about uh, a hospital in um, uh, Israel that's Beth there's uh, a the Beth the Beth medical center yeah exactly whereby okay. the um, a chatbot was mm-hmm. able to perform the phys- out perform uh, the reasoning of the physicians mm-hmm. but later they found out that even this chatbot had some issues that uh, it could not address properly, whereby it means now the human intervention needs to come in. So it is about augmented workforce, Workforce, but uh, it can't uh, replace. So like in the case, uh, in the case of Beth, so uh, it's like uh, the chatbot was able now was able to reason better in the clinical analysis. Exactly. uh, But when it comes now to the diagnosis, uh, it It failed. It failed. It failed. So that's whereby now we we need human intervention. And uh, the, the issue of technology is just uh, about augmentation. Mm. Like we are working alongside technology, alongside technology just to ensure that we are efficient and we are able to serve the patients uh, within a very short period of time mm. and also to detect diseases early, to predict among many other diverse applications. So generally, we should not be scared about losing our jobs. Uh, so it's like, what, we sh- what should we do now to be prepared uh, to work alongside these machines? This, this developing technologies. So what we need to do is first, uh, we need to appreciate that this is a technology that is with us. Oh, sure. And uh, there's no uh, escape route. And therefore, what we just need to adopt it, yes. uh, we need to learn about it and how to properly use it to ensure that, um, uh, you see, uh, as I said, a medical uh, area is a, a very, very sensitive uh, field. Field, And uh, there is need for responsible AI. And I'm repeating this why. Yeah. Um, responsible AI, artificial intelligence here, I say that there is need to be accountability and transparency. Yeah, and transparency. Because if a disease is not properly well diagnosed and um, uh, it causes a, a very severe effects to a patient, yeah. There must be uh, procedures and steps so that whoever came up with that system is able to explain to explain to us uh, <clears throat> the no, the idea the algorithm the like like algorithms running running uh, and the data situation. that was used mm-hmm. to train and so on so that we don't have some some kind of situations where by now these systems are just used um, when they are not. Uh, uh, properly, uh, uh, properly trained or properly then no one is being held accountable. Because uh, one thing, uh, as just as you mentioned, one thing that I realized that, uh, in the, of course, uh, medical field is a very sensitive exactly. area. Yeah. And uh, artificial intelligence, uh, just as the name suggests, artificial. Yeah. So it relies on the information that we feed it. Exactly. Uh, to generate new information. Yeah. Yeah. So if it is fed uh, on the wrong data or the wrong information, uh, say if it is to be used in diagnosis, uh, definitely uh, the results that we'll be having yeah. will be biased. Exactly. And that might have a very severe effect. Effect. Yeah. Yeah, it is Generally. It is the principle of garbage in, garbage, garbage out. out. Yeah, uh, actually. So it is something that... Uh, let it has the good side, but uh, let yeah. it just be used responsibly. Let it be yeah. used in a responsible it, ex- Yeah, manner. that is the mm-hmm. most uh, fundamental thing. Yes. Yeah. So uh, uh, I want to believe, uh, Cesar, that if we look at uh, artificial intelligence in the near future, mm-hmm. uh, I'm seeing even these uh, areas that have had this digital divide yes. for a long period, those areas that, that have been. Uh, 
let me say, ne kind of neglected or underdeveloped in terms of uh, access to okay. the emerging technologies. Yes, exactly. Uh, we are seeing inroads being made into those particular areas. Uh, yeah. And I don't know, what should these areas, or let me say these uh, countries that are still lagging behind, uh, what should they do to be prepared for this, because uh, this is a revolution that is cutting across the globe. Uh, there's yes. no country being left behind. Yeah. But at the moment, there are those countries that are not well prepared in terms of capacity. They don't have the right uh, guys or the right personnel uh, to operate this technology. They don't have those who are in the AI system, those who are developing this uh, system. So they rely on the imported, uh, let me say the imported uh, Human, human capacity. Capacity, yeah. yeah to embrace <laughs> this takes us back to <laughs> the era of colonization, whereby things were just being imposed to us. Being then, imposed to us, like yeah, uh, look when, at Africa. Yeah, you didn't yeah. know an A from a B. Yeah, exactly. They you had the language, but you could not code it. Code it, yeah. yeah. <laughs> but uh, what I can say, you see, uh, um, that takes us back to what we had discussed on the UN uh, uh, resolution yes. that. Uh, gave specific countries the mandate to ensure that even uh, them they have the autonomy, the autonomy to be able to implement these technologies too. And they were talking, of course, you have talked about the issue of um, them giving the human resource uh, capacity building. Yes. But you see, we, most countries are under the World Health Organization, yes. um, uh, which is, uh, of really? course, a branch of uh, UN. UN. And uh, it has a mandate to ensure that uh, no one is left behind. Uh, if you look at the, uh, during the, uh, the period of COVID, uh, sure. the testing of uh, COVID-19 cases, and it, most African countries suffered because they did not have the testing kits. Mm. You find in the whole nation just one mm. laboratory that one is laboratory able. That. But with artificial intelligence, this one can be detected anywhere uh, so you see if you but, but then it's it's good that you brought in the issue of uh, covid if you look at a uh, covid uh, issue mm -hmm. and uh, actually the generation and supply of the covid vaccines, vaccines. Uh, we can say that most of these countries were most of the developed countries were a bit more generous because they were able and willing to share yeah. uh, with us the the vaccines and the testing kits and as the well. testing kits as well. Yeah. But uh, will they equally be able and willing to and that generous to share with us uh, their their technology? Okay. In so time? even if they are not willing, uh, as if people have access to this information, mm -hmm. um, it is under my right conscience that mm -hmm. uh, as African we have capacity. Yeah. I want to give you an example. Okay. When uh, the issue of chat GPT-4 came, large language models, yes. and you see like this, uh, the superpowers, Russia and US, yes. you know what Russia did? Russia government yes. was able to set a committee and injected a lot of money, like a budget, to look into, like for them also to start. To, to come up with their own. Come out with their yeah. own technology. And yes. as we are speaking currently, yeah. already also we have some kind of uh, robots mm -hmm. that are able to deliver uh, goods and goods and, and from services. the supermarkets. Yeah. So it yeah. is something is, are we willing to take the challenge? That the challenge. Is, and is the government and um, uh, the local regulations, yeah. are, are they supportive of the initiative? Yeah. Yeah. If anything can be, uh, can be done, can be done yeah. because this is an era of um, uh, information. information, and I believe that a lot of information is in our disposal. Mm -hmm. Of course, we have those very, uh, uh, like the trade secrets. Mm -hmm. um, for instance, when we, we see like China <laughs> was able sometimes wants to steal some information, information some from the U.S. Process. So I believe as Africa, it is something that we can we Take can actually if, uh, if we really want to implement it. So we it's we need of course uh to build the capacity we need to invest in these and have that will 
Yeah, yeah, to yeah. Develop our own, our own. So I think that we we should now we should develop that kind of mentality. Yeah, yeah we should exactly. not just rely on, rely on what they have developed. Yes, exactly. We should learn from whatever they have developed. We should always try to now have our own version, replicate and even improve it, and even improve on it, that. Yeah, yeah. I think that we uh, yes. will will be able now to catch up. To catch up with them, yes, yeah. yeah. So uh, I think, yeah, uh, Sylvia, thank you. It's it has been a very inspiring conversation, insightful. Uh, thank you for your time. So thank you guys uh, for joining us today. Uh, it's been an insightful uh, conversation. So actually, if you haven't uh, subscribed to our YouTube channel, uh, kindly click the subscribe button. Do so so that uh, you don't miss uh, such insightful. Our conversations in the future. Thank you guys.